Okay, so let's turn this into that. What's up everyone? Hope you're doing well. So I'm still getting a ton of messages about how I calibrate and it has been a while since my last video about doing things in post. So I thought, okay, I got some nice footage over here. So let's edit this and get the cinematic look. But before we jump into Premiere Pro, let's talk about the footage I took. It was shot on the 5D Mark IV with the Sigma 35 1.4. It was all shot handheld, no gimbals. Really shaky footage because the camera has no stabilization. I used the c lock picture profile by James Miller. So you know, to get the most out of your camera and get better dynamic range, you should always use a flat picture profile. No matter if you're shooting Sony or Canon or what else, uh, try to go as flat as possible to get the best dynamic range. I personally don't like to shoot in real s lock or c lock because you're getting those grain in the shadows and also you have to use your native eyes of your camera. And therefore I use the c lock picture profile which I really like and for those of you shooting Sony I just put up a new Cine lock pack for your Sony cameras no matter if you're shooting on a7 III like I am from now on or the a6300, a6500 no matter what so make sure to check out my new Cine lock pack it's on Sapphire and I will put the link down in the description below also I added a Cine 2 picture profile into the pack so you have all the settings to set up your camera like I do so let's jump into Premiere Pro now and get that cinematic look. So here we are. I just selected some footage over here. So let's take a look at the sequence settings. And over here we choose 24 frames per second, which I'm using all the time for my YouTube videos. And make sure to check maximum bit depth and maximum render quality and hit OK. Yes. So let's start to bring some of those clips to your timeline. So first of all, if I'm shooting in a high frame rate and I want to get that slow motion, all you have to do is right click on your footage, modify, interpret footage and assume a new frame rate. In this case, we choose 24 FPS. And now your footage is in slow motion. Okay, so let's take this one and drag it over to your timeline. Let's do the same with the rest. Some nice fire over here. We can also turn this into slow motion. Okay, maybe this one. Wow. <laughs> so let's take another shot of Sansa. And the last one, myself. So let's color grade this real quick. I'm adding an adjustment layer. Yes. Putting this on top of your clips like this. And we will go to Lumetri Color. So if you don't see this, try to click on color here and it should pop up. So I just added my CMG Canon LUT over here, which you can also find on my Sapphire store. And as you can see, it already looks great. And now we want to do some further adjustments to all of these shots. And what I like to do is just keep the LUT over here, the adjustment layer. And then we take a look at the clip itself. So this one right now looks great but I want to add some more contrast. So I'm going to select the clip and go to basic correction. And now I'm adding some more contrast here. Yes. And this looks great. Whoa. Okay. Don't have to do that much on this one. So this one looks a bit too cold for my taste. So I'm just raising the temperature to the right like this. Yeah. looks nice. So let's take a look at this one. We need some more contrast over here. Maybe put down the highlights a bit. Yes. So this one's also too cold. So I'm bringing up the temperature just a bit. Maybe raising the exposure, adding some contrast. And what I like to do is bring down the highlights in most of my clips because the highlight roll of the Canon just sucks. Maybe some more saturation. Yeah, and that's it. Nice. Here we can lift the shadows. Adding some more contrast. Same over here. So 
So that's basically all I do when it comes to the color grading process, if you want to call it like this. So let's take a look at stabilization in post, which I like to do when my footage is too shaky. In some cases I like the shaky look because it gives you that um, really personal feeling. But sometimes I just want to have these real smooth shots which look like they were shot on a gimbal. So and to make this even smoother, we just go to effects, search for warp stabilizer and drop it onto your clip. And now it's analyzing the background. So sometimes the program can't analyze the footage because it's too shaky or the movements were too crazy. So you get this wobbling effect. But in this one, it looks perfect. Yeah. So that's all I do with stabilization. People are always asking, uh, which gimbal did you use for this video? But most times I'm shooting all handheld. So we can try to use the same technique with this one. Let's turn it into slow motion and drag it over here and it's already really smooth but if you add a warp stabilizer it looks even better okay it's done and it looks great maybe going back to lumetri again bring down the highlights some more contrast Yes. Yeah, looks nice. Okay. So let's move on to the next step, black bars. So almost every movie you have seen has these cinematic black bars on top and the bottom. So there are two ways to do this. Either you can go to effects and just type in crop, just drag it over to your adjustment layer, go over to your effect controls and over here we have the crop and now you could just type in something here at the top and the bottom and boom you have these letter boxes what i like to do is i found these black bars png files so for different ratios you get a ton of pngs which you can simply drag and drop to your timeline so right now we're in 1080 so, so let's choose this one and there we go you got the black bars it's up to you what you want to use. I'm lazy and I like to drag and drop and everything is done. So this already looks really cinematic, but what's missing right now is music. If I saw that footage, it really reminded me of the Netflix original series, Dark. If you haven't watched it already, you should, because it's awesome. And, and I took so much inspiration from this. And there's this artist called Agnes Obel and she did the soundtrack for this series and here's the song familiar so let's just drag this onto your timeline for sure now you should match your clips to your audio but for this one i just keep it like that so i really love that soundtrack it's so intense and peaceful you should check her out on spotify um okay so now we got the music what else film grain so almost in every movie you uh have seen that there is a slightly amount of grain on the image um you will get this look if you're shooting on high budget cinema cameras, but we want to fake it now. So I got some film going over here from Grainzilla. So this one's not free, but if you just type in uh, free film grain into Google, you will find some uh, grain you can use also. But I like this one a lot because it's super organic and it, it just looks cool. So we want to drag this above all the other stuff we have in our timeline. So now you see it's too short. so. I'm just going to hold down my Alt key, drag it to the right and it gets copied. And you can do this as often as you want. So then we have to resize it because this is 4K film grain and we are on a 1080 timeline. So select all, right click, scale to frame size. And then again, right click and nest. So you get a nested sequence, which you can crop as you want it okay oh i just made a mistake the black bars should be on top for sure so let's drag the black bars and the nested sequence is our film grain and now we have to put the blend mode to overlay um put this one to 70 that looks great yeah, so that's all with film grain. It's just a subtle thing to do with your footage, but it gives you so much more of these 
organic film camera looks. So let's take a look at this. Yeah, looks nice. So there's something else I like to add in post and for this one I'm creating a new adjustment layer, putting this above all and especially if you're shooting on a Sony camera like the a6500 sometimes your or in most cases your 1080p image looks very soft so therefore we want to do some post sharpening um, let's type in unsharp mask over here drag this to your new adjustment layer and I like to set this to 25 and the radius to 0, 0.5 you're not able to tell this right now, but if you watch your video in full resolution, you will notice that it gets a bit sharper. And I wouldn't do this in 4K, but in 1080, it's totally fine and it looks super nice. Okay, so the last step is motion blur. So that's a thing you don't have to add, but I like to because it gives you another tiny amount of that cinematic look. So I found this plugin, which is called Real Smart Motion Blur RSM. B. This also is not free. I'm not in a collaboration with them. You can try to find some uh, free plugins for this or maybe there's another way then feel free to share it in the comments for others. Um, but I like to use this one and we will drag this over to your adjustment layer on top and I leave everything at default. And so this one just adds some motion blur between your frames so it looks even more cinematic. So that's already it. Let's go to render this one. So here we are, I made myself a CMG preset here. So now you may be wondering why I'm rendering in 1440 instead of 1080. And the reason for this is simply that YouTube has limitations when it comes to bit rates. And if you're rendering in 1080, I think the maximum bit rate is about 12 megabit or something like this. So I'm choosing this resolution because it simply looks better if you upload it to YouTube. Let's move on. Frame rate 24, everything at default. Rendered maximum depth should be checked. So, so bitrate settings, I choose VBR to pass. That simply means that the program goes through all your footage two times. And as a target bitrate, I choose 30. Maximum bitrate is 50. Yeah, nice. Okay, use maximum render quality for sure, and that's it. Export video, export audio, should be checked, and that's all. Hit export, and that's it. So that's basically all I do. If you got something to add, just feel free to put it in the comments, and maybe some people can learn from you, because most of the time I still don't know what I'm even talking about, so feel free to share it. And uh, if you want to get those cinematic lots for your Sony a7 III, you can use this uh, discount code to get a 30% off. I hope you liked the video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. So all the stuff, the plugins uh, I use in this video are linked in the description. Make sure to check this out. Okay, so now let's just roll the clip I just edited. Tschüss. <laughs>